Okay, so here we are again with another video. Uh, like I said, this is 1989. Uh, we skipped ahead a few years. Shochikun had a car crash or a car accident. Uh, he was outside of his car and he got hit by a car. Something he and I have in common, actually. That's uh, why I can't ride bicycles anymore. Um, I wasn't on a bike. I just got hit by a car while I was walking, and now I can't ride bikes. Uh, so this is game one of the 44th Honinbo final. This is 1989. Uh, and Chochikun sweeps the series. Uh, he wins all four games against Takumi and Masaki. And this is when they say this is the Cho renaissance. This is Cho's starting to come back into, into his own. And he's going to have to chase Kobayashi because Kobayashi's been winning and winning and winning. And uh, this is Chochikun trying to get the Honinbo title. Uh, this this year, uh, the, the year in, in 1989, he uh, won, I believe, the Judon, but lost the Tangan. And so uh, he was kind of like starting to grab a few titles back. But, of course, Kobayashi was holding on tight to the Kisei and the Meijin. So, uh, so let's watch uh, him play for the, um, the uh, uh, Honimbo. Um, we're going to see a lot of Takumi Masaki in the coming time. One, because they're... Styles are very uh, um, contrary to each other, and two, because um, Takumi Masaki was one of those players that Chochikun had to play a lot for these big titles. So Chochikun plays the 5 3 point and plays his cross Fuseki, and then he immediately encloses. And I like this, uh, these, these kinds of. Uh, I, I play the Shusaku Diagonal to this approach a lot. Uh, it's one of my favorite responses. Um, but I normally do this sequence here. Because I like this. I like this uh, shape here. And there's still Aji here. So white often comes back. Anyway. Uh, black Tanukis to come over here. And uh, plays this double approach here, which I find very interesting. Works well with this side because it's a natural extension from here. Uh, and because this is high, there is, you know, not really a, a groundedness to this. Um, and I, I want to go back to kind of what I was originally saying when I first started making these videos. Is it's for new players to look at the game of Go and remember that all of your moves need to be consistently following a, a story that you're, you're writing. And... Um, when you first start out, your story's not going to make as much sense as it could, but the better you get, the more sense it'll make, and that's a lot easier than trying to learn all the possible moves on the board. That's why humans for so long ha had been better than computers at this, and that's why we had to teach a computer to get that intuition, to like understand the game's story, just for it to have a chance against a professional, and it learned it very quickly. So if you're trying to learn the game of Go, you have to remember... You gotta, you gotta make sure you stay consistent with the story that you're telling in your moves. So <clears throat> we're gonna, we're gonna talk about the story of this game. So Black's kind of widening his shoulders, getting space, building the space here, and uh, White saying not too much space, and uh, kind of making this splitting attack here that affects both these stones. And this stone here. So black needs to respond down here. Because that stone's a little more uh, precarious. These stones at least have their shoulders widened. They're in a, they have a base. And then white tries to surround. And black does this jump out here. This is the horse's face. Um, but yeah, this is a very, you know, flexible escape move here. And, and uh, you know, white could come in and do something like this. And black probably wouldn't respond like that because that cuts him up. So black would need to find a better response. Uh, so let's assume. And maybe black has some plans for how to gain life here. Maybe he has attached here. But um, yeah, there's some weaknesses in this area. But black has room to work down low. He has cutting points. If white comes here. 
maybe, oh, uh, white still needs to respawn here, and black can get out. So there's, you know, a few things that can happen in this area. I'm not really worried about, worrying about the details, I'm just trying to stay with the story a little bit, and white tries to pressure this bottom group to, this is, this is an idea of a leaning attack, you know, you try and build some strength by pressuring some other group so you can come back and attach the one you want to, attack the one you want to attack. And now white's, <clears throat> this is kind of a talking me a style move, because white's saying, I want something here. And uh, black kind of offers it to him in exchange for this base on the side, and then he attacks att attacks this weak point here, which he then uses to really connect up to these stones here. So black got this side here, and white got this influence facing outwards, which is very Takamiya uh, style, uh, inf influence art oriented style. But it's kind of hard to say what. what White's going to do with the, this. I'm sure Takamiya has a plan, but it looks difficult. So white has more power on the board, and black has more territory. So it's white's... Uh, white must deal with it. He might, must deal with the territory using his power, and uh, he can jump in here and not worry about too severe of an attack. And when black comes in, white can attack severely. So that's kind of the difference between having power and not having power. But here, black offers something. He plays this sequence here, starting with the Atakomi here. And you think to yourself, like, oh, black can do this. Right? But might as well just start by playing this move and not make this exchange. Because you might want to handle it differently later on. Um, that exchange there only, only is only good for white. Anyway, so so black cuts or white cuts off those stones, and black offers a situation here. He says, "Hey, you can have these stones, and I can have these stones. I'll have this territory on the side, and white accepts." Um, luckily for black, he can get a little more than just these two stones because otherwise this would probably be a good result for much better result for white. So black plays here. And yeah, white has to come back over here because if he plays elsewhere, this gets a little precarious because these are in dangerous position, these are in dangerous position. Yeah, so there's some issues. So white comes back like this, and then black starts to mobilize these stones. And he immediately tries to create a safe shape for them. Uh, and, and now he comes back, and these, these stones are uh, in a good position. They're connected to this group back here, so which means this group and their possible uh, slightly short, uh, slight shortage of liberties is probably fine. And then white tries to take, make use of this influence here, which is necessary because black has all of this. Black has some territory here, probably. He has a big corner here. White has a big corner here, sure. But in order to, in, a, in a corner here, but in order to counteract all of this, he's going to need to make a lot of territory here. Black immediately prods this weak point here and sets up base. White's going to harass this group here. And then white's going to try and threaten this base that black made. And white's got or black's got a lot of weak points here, so that's why he's able to set up a base. If you find an area that has a lot of weak points of your opponent, uh, you don't want to just poke the weak points, you know, because you're going to poke them and they're going to be gone. Your, your opponent's going to defend those areas. You want to save those weak points for later on when you might want to use them in this way that Chochikun's doing here. Because in this case, the weak points give him extra moves that he can use to create a strong... Uh, position for this group. So Black makes some exchanges here that are basically endgame exchanges. They're going to help them settle a little bit, but they're basically just to, to give them these extra points. You know, um, later on, White's going to have to play some moves here, so Black's going to be able to get this uh, ahead of time. So here, White goes about broadening his shoulders again, 
which is just a territorial thing. This is an endgame move here. Even though this group is a little precarious, uh, it's not entirely alive yet, um, it's probably going to be fine because uh, there are a lot of exchanges black can make here, that Sente exchanges black can make here that, that threaten to capture stones, and they also build eyes, and black can get an eye down here. So black basically makes that second eye for sure at this point, or makes that one eye for sure. And then he exchanges this, and then he leaves. Because now if white comes here, black can make a second eye in this area, or you know, cut and cut. There's some good stuff that can happen. Hold on. Sorry, distraction. Uh, so black makes that cut there, exchanges here, and then comes back to threaten to make an eye. And now he's got this this uh, position here that, that uh, is completely alive. This is 100% alive. Um, he made these exchanges here, so he might be able to come back and take the stone at some point. Uh, and now white's going to play this end game here try and minimize the side a little bit. Really this move here was all coming back to coming up here and being able to get this stone, right? Because this prodded at a weakness here, black defended a certain way so that white could exchange and get these stones and it forced black to respond this way. Let me show you that again. All right, so black, black can't do this. Right, this makes it worse because yeah so the white can't what uh, black can't do this because because he's gonna lose even more stones than he did before um, oh sorry same one I'm a little out of it today uh, So yeah, so white is able to take this black stone here. Uh, he does need to defend because otherwise white, black will be able to take advantage of some weaknesses here or here, either one, uh, and and uh, white will lose some of what he just fought for. Uh, and now it becomes a matter of how much territory can white get in the center because this is still very big. Um, let's take a look at this. This is. Like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30 points here. Black, uh, white's got 15. And uh, he doesn't have this corner anymore. Uh, he's got maybe 5 points here. Another 10 points, maybe more here. So there is, these, these two counteract this. Um, but Black's also got this uh, corner here, corner here, a couple points here that probably uh, balance out with this right here. So White has to make a center here uh, great enough to counteract the territory that Black made here and here. Uh, so White's going to start from here instead of just directly saving the stone, because if he directly saves the stone, Black just jumps in and wreaks havoc. There's an open flank here. There's an open flank here. And for a lot of new players who find themselves with territory and they realize, oh no, he's going to get all the center, they'll freak out and they'll try and jump right in. But remember, if you if you play correctly, if you play right in, in opening sequences, uh, then you'll have, you won't be, if you're sealed into the corner, you're playing a corner sequence wrong. If you're completely sealed in, then you're probably making uh, some mistakes, um, unless you're just jumping in, invading 3-3 recklessly. Uh, you're probably making some mistakes if you're sealed into the corner. Uh, you want to make sure that that corner, that you have eye, you know, arms in the corner, and you can reach in and, and grab stuff and break up that corner if necessary, especially if you're a territorial player, which is Cho Cho Kun, uh, playing against a Moyo player like Takami Masaki. Um, so Black needs to jump in a little more uh, conservatively here. You can't just, can't just do this, of course. 
because uh, uh, this is all going to get cut off, even though even though black can kill that stone and white's corner, white center is looking quite big enough. Um, so black needs to come in a little uh, more solidly connected. Uh, white makes an exchange here just so that black has to make this um, weird shape and, and he gets some sente later on. I think it's good for endgame later on, but... Um, I don't know the details of that move. And then uh, Black starts to threaten to pull these stones out, which is big. And in doing so, he's able to build up enough strength for him to do something like this, which eyes both the connection here uh, and some, some kind of um, difficulties in this area, as well as the connection over here. And White just tries to keep his territory. Uh, very submissive, but probably necessary at this point to keep the game close, but, but Black at this point has a lot of momentum and he's able to push and push and push and cause this trouble. Uh, and yeah, White pulls these stones out here, but Black is able to get some points in this area, break some points in this area, and uh, he goes into this end game stage where he's able to exchange this, like we were talking about earlier, he's able to take this stone, and um, create this position here where he's getting a few points out of this group now. He's limiting the size of this group even more. We originally counted this as, uh, we at least counted this area as 10 points or so, but that's not anymore. And this we counted this area as five, it's probably still about five. Uh, and this area is shrinking a little more now. And the center's not big enough. It doesn't look like it's going to be big enough. Um, Black's able to continue prodding. And you can tell that Black's counted very well here. Uh, so at this point, the center is looking like it's going to be something about 15 points here and about 12 points on the top. And uh, Black probably did a little better in this area than I counted. And uh, gained a few points in this area. So this ends up being uh, uh, worth quite a bit. And at this point, I'm oh, sorry, this point it's getting pretty desperate because this is a squeeze now. Eventually black white's going to have to come back and kill these stones entirely because uh, this group only has one eye. So eventually this group is going to be in Atari, and before that happens, White's going to have to come back and deal with this. Uh, and at this point, when Black makes that abundantly clear, the White's going to need to come back and play a move like this. Not now, but in a move like this. Or maybe now. The kill makes it a little more complicated than just that. It's, it's annoying to have to play those moves, and there are lots of, lots of the points because Black's just playing Dame. White's losing points. As we can see here, Black's got a very small lead, according to the score estimator, and it is pretty accurate in this case. Um, Black does, when I counted it, uh, I was reviewing this game in a coffee shop. When I counted it, it was really, really close, but it just seemed like, you know, they're in a, they're, they got very quickly in the late stage of endgame, and, uh, you know, Black's going to be able to prod a little bit here. He's going to be able to uh, play a move like this move here, which uh, exposes the possibility of black playing this clamp and connecting out. It makes this co kind of important. Um, where's the other co that was kind of important? There's another co that meant something. Where's it? Uh, I guess that was just what I was thinking of. But, um, yeah, at this point, Black has a it's tight lead, but it's enough of a lead that Takumi Masaki knows this game's lost to him. However, if this game, if this game was played out, it would have looked a lot closer than a lot of games uh, pros have played out to the very end. Um, but, yeah, the game actually ended here, just so you know. Anyway, uh, I have to do these videos a little more often because I feel like I'm very rusty when I do these. 
um, and a bit nervous, uh, to be completely honest. Um, but, uh, you know, I hope you enjoy. Uh, I hope you, um, um, learn from these videos. I, they're not like, you know, I'm not trying to do what a lot of videos are doing. Uh, there's a lot of videos out there that are really great that tell you the meaning behind each move, uh, the purpose behind each of them, and, and they're very important, and those are very important videos. But I think uh, it's very important for new players to just be able to look at a game and be able to think of it the w same way somebody thinks of a sporting event or the same way somebody thinks of uh, you know a, a concert, a, a, a play, a television drama, uh, and you know anything like that. It's very important to be able to look at a game and see the the tide, see the momentum, see the the flow back and forth between the players because when you see a lot of new players play they'll play a move that is either out of out of uh, topic uh, they'll, they'll play a move that doesn't actually make sense in terms of um, what's going on on the board you know there's some big capturing race and it's it's tied you know the, the capturing of the Liberty race is tied and they really need to go and capture that group and they play somewhere else and that's why did you do that? I said, oh, it's a co-threat. There was, there's no co. Why is this? Why, why are you playing a co-threat? Or, or they'll play something that that doesn't make um a lot of sense to the most important thing on the board. And it's because when they tell the story to themselves, or rather, when they don't tell the story to themselves, they don't see, oh, this fight is happening right now. We're arguing over this territory. I'm trying to build a base. No, they just think, uh, there's a stone over there. I'll try and capture that. If there's a stone over there, I'll try and capture that. Um, so when if you're a new player and you're trying to get uh, uh, into this game, uh, try and tell the story as you're playing it. Try and talk about what am I trying to do? Uh, what is my opponent trying to do? Where is the big area on the board? Um, and you'll hear uh, strong players talk about this a lot. You'll hear them talk about... Um, Oh, the biggest place on the board, or urgent before big, and you need to start thinking the story your way so that you can uh, start to define what words like urgent, uh, what words like sente and gote, uh, the initiative, what that really means to you and how you can uh, describe it in a context that is, is worth that, that's worth uh, um, that's more efficiently understood. Like for example, I like to think of, of the game very much like hockey. So, uh, I because I, I know that game very well, and so occasionally I, something happens in the game of Go, and I say, "Oh, I gotta check him. I gotta, I I have to push to the push to the center because he's trying to he's trying to keep me from the center. I need to push into the center, and, and it's all." in terms that I'm very familiar with because I choose to make it in terms I'm very familiar with. And and that's it's an abstract game, so when you play the game you should definitely try and think of the game uh um in terms that you are comfortable with. Uh because it'll make the game it'll make this story of the game a lot easier for you. Anyway, I'm rambling a little bit now. Uh next game, uh, we will also see Takumi Masaki and I'm gonna try and do that much sooner than uh than I had in terms of time difference between these these games. Anyway, thank you uh, for your time, and uh, I hope you enjoy the video.